Don't be discouraged anymore You'll find the thing you've been looking for Pick up the pieces of the floor Just trust, trust it'll be alright Your heart is lonely, but it's strong You might be lost now, and it's not wrong Hello, my name is Timothy Ruiz. I am an enrolled member of the Cahuilla Band of Indians, a descendant of the La Jolla Band of Lusania Indians, Ipe Nation of Santa Isabel, and Colorado River Indian Tribes of Fort Mojave. I am the Community Outreach Coordinator for the Stronghearted Native Women's Coalition. Um, what I do is outreach to our communities and get events started of awareness that are going on within Indian Country, um, education and policy. Um, Stronghearted Native Women's Coalition has been around since 2005 um, with our Executive Director Keely, um, Keely Linton, who has been with Shinwick since the beginning. Um, I've worked with Stronghearted, um, Stronghearted Native Women's Coalition for the last three and a half years. I am working on you know, getting the education out there for our communities here in San Diego, as well as um, Riverside County. Events like this for the MMIW movement started back when, in, it started with the Canadian peoples, the First Nation peoples, and then it moved down here to uh, the 50 nations here in the lower 48. Stronghearted Native Women's Coalition is one of 20 coalitions nationwide. We provide services throughout um, the four counties here in Southern California. Um, you know, a lot of movement out there uh, wearing red with the people. The handprint. We have us as um, we have Kumi, who is the grandmother who watches over those who are missing, who watches over those who are were murdered. Uh, she represents us um, here in the southern part of California. Uh, Stronghearted Native Women's Coalition works with deep domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, as well as um, youth in education, policy and advocacy. We pray for the families that grieve. We pray for those who are lost and who have not yet found. We pray for those who education. They fight and promote policy changes and new and more protective laws. And most importantly, they fight to stop these crimes that undermine our very existence. Thank you all for attending. By being here, you are all part of the solution. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, I'd like to introduce our Executive Director of Stronghearted Native Women's Coalition, Keely Linton. Okay, good morning everyone, or good afternoon everyone. 
Um, I just wanted to um, let you guys all know, I, well, first of all, um, I'm uh, Keely Winton and I'm from the Mesa Grande Band and the director for Strong Hearted Native Women's Coalition. Um, and um, we just wanted to make sure that everybody's aware that there's services. We have all of the, some tribal programs over here. Um, so anytime that someone goes missing um, or they ha there's a murder cases, there's a lot of resources that are available to families and to loved ones or even those that are victimized. Um, and um, part of our job is also to promote and raise awareness. And we do a lot of um, legislative work at the state and federal level. So anytime that there's issues involved with um, law enforcement not um, taking or re reporting those cases or they're not identifying um, our people correctly, um, part of our job is to make sure that we are taking that back to the Congress and state legislature. And so we do a lot of support for those types of things. And so please be aware, uh, we work a lot with tribal chairmen and tribal chairmen um, all across the state are taking more act or being more active and proactive on resolving some of the jurisdictional issues. And so legislation is really important when it comes down to a vote. So um, please take a look at, um, you know, our Facebook page and then also the tribal programs um, information and their their websites or Facebook pages um, because a lot of that information is going through um, for our people to be more aware. And so anything that we can do to help support, um, there is funding available for families if you, someone does go missing, whether that's to help pay for billboards or to, um, you know, connect better with law enforcement or to provide resource, resources. There's a, a several different programs that will help um, get your DNA. We have the national, um, sorry, NEMIS here who will, um, it's the national database for missing persons. And so um, you can check out their booth and provide information there. So there's a lot of different resources and we, it's just really important for people to be aware of that. So that's all I wanted to share today. Thank you. So I'd like to introduce, uh, Mr. Cold, would you like to come up and say a few words? Up to you. It's a good day to be out and representing this, um, this, I would call it a situation that has been gone unnoticed for too long. And we all need to bring awareness and recognition. I am the uh, recreation manager for the Lincoln Tribe and just recently was elected on the Valley Center School Board. And my whole, uh, advocating a journey is for the children. They are our future. And without them, we have nothing. We need to protect them, look out for them, teach them what is right, proper, and respect. And also, more than anything, show them that they are loved because they need to know that and understand that. And without them, there's not us. I want to thank you all. Bless you all. Thank you. Uh, up next, we're going to have our guest speaker come up and speak, uh, Veronica Kalen. Nothing. You know, a lot of rumors started when he went missing. You took off. He just left. This is O's being O's. If you knew O's, he wouldn't have left his son. He wouldn't have left his family. Uh, family was everything to him. And if he was in some sort of trouble, you know, he would have called his brother and said, Hey, I need help. That call hasn't come in. And... It's got to be us to advocate because I really did think that it was going to be like the movies where we were going to have all this help come in and advocate for us and it wasn't like that. And it's got to be us to keep pushing and pushing and pushing for those answers and being persistent and not giving up. Pick up that phone, keep calling those detectives, keep calling the sheriff, keep calling lo lo local law enforcement asking for updates. You know, send those emails in, leave those messages, keep pushing for a phone call and a response. Um, O's doesn't have a voice anymore. You know, we, you know, it's an ambiguous loss because we don't have him, but he's not there. So we still have hope that maybe he will come home one day and we can all yell at him and say, what'd you do this for, you know? Um, he lived a simple life. You know, he helped out a lot of elders up in San Isabel, and he was honoring feisty too, you know, but 
He wore his heart on his sleeve and he did a lot for our community. And now this is a part of my family's story. This is a part of my community story. This is a part of my tribe. And I just never knew how many indigenous people were missing in San Diego County alone until this happened and to my family. And we miss him every day and we'll never give up looking for him. And what I want to stress is just because a detective or law enforcement is, you know, telling you these answers, if you're not okay with that, keep pushing until you get to see that evidence, you know? Um, you don't have to settle for less. If it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel okay, just keep pushing and asking. We got to be the ones to advocate, and that's what we continue to do. Thank you. In the hurting, in the blue, you're the one I hold on to. Put it all. I will wait upon you, Lord. Just because I'm in this pain, it doesn't mean I can't be whole again. Faithful to the I introduce myself in our traditional ways because wherever the road leads us, we always find relatives. And I'm sure somewhere amongst us, uh, we will find our relations. Um, I want to um, introduce the medicine wheel riders. We hail from um, all over the country and the medicine wheel ride was initiated by a vision with this incredible woman, Dr. Shelley Denny. She's uh, from the Ojibwe Nation. Um, our, our local leader, is Miss Jack Seneca Hops. Jack, I don't even know your tribal affiliation. She's Blackfoot. Okay, and then we have our Eagle Staff Carrier, Miss Levy. She is also the Neh Navajo. Uh, Levy and Shelly are also on the board of directors of the nonprofit organization. Uh, next, I want to introduce four women that are have been honored to carry the medicine skirt that the Medicine Wheel Ride has on each of our journeys. We have women that have come as far away as Texas, uh, New Mexico, Arizona. We just got here. <laughs> Sorry, we're late. Um, but I want to introduce the four ladies that were asked to carry the Medicine Wheel uh, the medicine skirts on this journey. The medicine skirts were gifted to our organization by another nonprofit in Arizona, the Phoenix Indian Center. It's the oldest uh, you know, urban Indian center in the country. They have been around for 76 years. And the last time we came out here on this journey to do uh, a benefit ride, they gifted us with four ribbon skirts representing the four holy directions. And every time we do a ride, we choose four women to carry these skirts and to honor ones that have been lost that have gone before us. And so today, um, Miss Lovey carries the black medicine color. And this is in honor of her niece and her son who have been lost in this issue. We also have Miss uh miss sylvia who is carrying the red skirt miss sylvia uh lost her daughter several years ago uh in the this this issue again missing and murdered indigenous uh peoples 
Um, we also have Miss Jennifer, who is carrying the white skirt. Uh, her nephew went missing about a year ago. Um, and thankfully, the, the, the ending in, in this particular situation, he was eventually found. And we also have Miss Lorinda, who is carrying the yellow medicine skirt in honor of her sister, who was taken away violently and tragically by someone that, that knew her. What we do know oftentimes in these cases is that even if the perpetrator is found, even if the perpetrator is caught, justice isn't always served. And every one of these women will say that. And so we ride with them, we ride for them. On our bikes, we let uh, Creator and the winds take our tears. And we ride for all of you. We ride for those that you have missing. We, ha we ride for those uh, that have been taken away from you. And uh, today being May 5th, um, a National Day of Remembrance, we rode in today to be with you and to honor your ancestors and your missing and your murdered relatives. We're honored to be a part of this. We're honored to be here. And I'm going to actually ask uh, Miss Levy to say a few words. She's our Eagle Staff Carrier. Thank you so much for this time. I cannot. Hey, Levy, hey, Yinshia. I come to you from the net from Arizona. She can achieve me now. Said that she's in Bush's chain. Now, pay the net of Shinala. But she need the she What are a son and shun? And again, I introduce myself to you um, in our dinner way. And it's an honor and a privilege to be here to be a part of your remembrance day today. And um, uh, one thing I'm going to say is I'm just trying to um, warm up a little bit here. <laughs> it was a cold ride, <laughs> but beautiful. So, um, and again, um, I am the Eagle Staff Carrier um, in the jingle dress. The jingle dress representing all the ones, our loved ones that are missing. And hopefully with wherever you go and hearing of the jingle dress you know that's calling our loved ones to come back and also the healing process where our eagle staff carries all our prayers up to the highest and down to the lowest and so it is an honor and a privilege to be able to do this and go to different events to our relatives you know, all over the place and so again it, it's we're here with you guys today and we are the voice for all our loved ones our people our relatives who have gone us that were not supposed to go the way they did and some of them have not been returned yet never give up hope prayer is powerful and I'm just going to share with you guys that um, one of our Diné sisters was gone for 35 years today she's finally going home to her final resting place so just remembering all our loved ones wherever they may be back you know you know it's just we don't know the where are about, but prayer is powerful. And yes, um, in June, I lost my son. He went missing. We went looking, we went searching. And his body was found out in the middle of the desert in Arizona. To this day, don't have answers. And again, my niece, she also went missing, but her remains were found and only could be identified by her dental work. And so this is the reason why I ride. I stand with each and every one of you. 
who hurt for who feel the pain and the hurt. I have an ear to listen. I have tears that roll down for each and every one of our loved ones that have gone beyond. So it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you guys. And it's also an honor to ride with my sisters from all over, you know. This is just, this is not even half of us. So um, we have sisters from all over that join us on. Tomorrow is our big ride in San Diego. And so we'll be busy with that too. So if you guys aren't busy, come on out. We can get you the information after. So thank you. Now learning on a spiritual journey that I've endured that uh, we as Native American people have historical trauma. And uh, other people call it PTSD, but it, it is a real thing. It's historical trauma. And it's now becoming scientifically found out that it is also in our historical DNA. So the tragedy that le people lived, our ancestors years ago, the sufferings they went through for us to be here today is within us. And we get treated like this. They're lost, they're murdered, they're stolen. And part of that is your soul. And I just want to say that my sisters, my her other sister, my our cousin sister, in there, Brenda. She's our other cousin sister. We've all endured this tragedy. And I just wanted these women to stay up here so they can look at you and look at us and pray and ride with us in your heart and their hearts and um if you can all just give her a hug and some strength because she needs her she needs that she's finally coming to terms with this happening and as the tribes we are weak so i want you to know that when i travel i have been asked to sing mom's song because they realize that's what they needed to do. And I'm asking the sisters on the road to carry us with you on that road because it talks about going on the red road, on the star, to the cosmos, to the moira, to the moon. It talks about having the spirit release itself back to our ancestors and our relatives. We know they're at peace and happy, but my human self can get kind of stubborn and stay sorrow. And I have to breathe through it. So I ask you to take a deep breath. Oh, Jesus, let it go. And when you feel that, take that breath. Know that our arms and our songs are around you. Joan, let's show my relations. Hello, my name is Lorinda Warren, and I'm Ashi Hennishle, Kia Ani Bashishin. I am a Diné woman from the Navajo Nation Northern Agency and I ride for MMIW and MMIP um, for numerous reasons and the main reason being my little sister Michaeline Warren she was murdered um, a week before her 44th birthday and she was murdered by her partner's son and it was a violent murder that she had endured um she was my sister and my younger sister and she was very quiet very timid not outspoken and we always grew up on dirt bikes her and i always grew up on dirt bikes she should she would never get on it herself She'd always say, I'll get on back, I'll get on the back. And I said, all right. So I would be riding our dirt bikes and she'd be sitting in the back. And then when I got my big bike, she was like, sis, when are you gonna give me a ride? I said, all right, I'll give you a ride. So I got on my bike and she jumped on the back, you know, grown woman, <laughs> jumped on the back. And she's, you know, now that she's not here, she still rides on the back of me. And I'm always so cautious and always, you know, thinking about her every time I ride somewhere. And with her being, and with her being not here anymore, I think she's the one that brings me to all these wonderful, beautiful places, like riding up to Sturgis, seeing Crazy Horse. I thought about her going to Daytona Beach with my sisters, my riding sisters. I thought about her. My sister taking me to Hawaii with her and her family. I thought, you know what? My little sister's never gonna see these sights. So I really believe 
being part of this organization and riding with all my sisters and my brothers has brought me to all these places and I honestly believe that my sister's there because you know she would never she didn't like to travel she didn't like to go places so you know I believe that she's here with me every time I'm doing something or I'm somewhere new my sister's there with me so that's the reason I ride and follow my sisters and make sure they're safe and get to where we need to be and meet new people and make new friends so that's who I am thank you yeah hello yacht eh uh, my name is Beverly Bigay and I am from Farmington, New Mexico. Although, um, I am uh, and I ride with the Medicine Wheel Riders. I've been riding them with them for a few years now. And the reason why I ride is um, first because of my sister, um, Sylvia. And um, I, I grew really close to her and she lost her daughter and to a really um, tragic thing that happened to her so I, I started supporting her for, from that point on and then a couple a year or two years after that my little brother was murdered and it was um, really hard for my aunt and so I, I really had um, a heart to, to be there for her and um, so that's the reason why I ride and just not too long ago a few weeks ago my sister my cousin was murdered too and they're still going through investigation with that so it's just all over and and I enjoy being with the sisters and riding for that cause because now it seems like it's we're spreading awareness and it's it's going so fast over and I and that's what I just like about it so that's the reason why I ride riding here with the MMIW um, to represent for uh, my sister Cecily Morgan and my niece Alicia at City who were taken uh, from this world through domestic violence and I am here to represent for that as well and also to make awareness to Title 17 from the Navajo Nation legislation that Title 17 needs to be taken more seriously and it needs to be changed because even through domestic violence nothing has no justice for my two my two women of my family who have been taken away so there is no justice for that as well so Title 17 needs to be changed or be aware of and that's what I'm trying to represent with with the sisters of MMIW and so that's what I'm here for and of course to hear other stories of domestic violence because it is something that won't be brought out to attention as well as domestic violence through men and my uncles I have nephews who go through the same way as well so I'm helping them to raise up more awareness for male attention as well as females and that's what I'm here for. I'm also looking for my uh, uncle, uh, Todd Blanchard, as well, who's been missing since August 30th, 2002. So it's going to be 38 years he's out missing, and family still has no answers, but we are still here after 28 years of wanting to come out. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. Yeah, you're gonna make it. Tell all those demons they can hide They don't know the greatness you have inside No Stand tall and keep your head up high And just trust me, trust it'll be alright yeah. Be still 